<laughs> Hi, I'm Emily Tellick, and you're watching Kate Media News. Our guest today is Josh Mason, who will be discussing his campaign for Massachusetts State Representative in the 1st District of Barnesville. Josh, how are you doing today? Fantastic. How are you today, Emily? I'm wonderful. Thank you so much for being here today. So can you um, tell our viewers a little bit about yourself? Um, you know, let's just get to know you for a little bit. Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, my name is Josh Mason. Uh, I was originally born in Houston, Texas. Uh, I moved to Cape Cod when I was five and I grew up here. Uh, I went through the Dennis Yarmouth school system, graduating with the class of 2000 uh, from Dennis, Dennis Yarmouth High School. Uh, I then attended Hofstra University on Long Island, New York and studied film production, uh, which was a passion of mine. I then moved to Los Angeles following college and worked in the television and film industry for a number of years. Uh, I unfortunately succumbed to the economic downturn of 2009 and had to relocate back to the Cape in 2010. Um, and I got into hospitality management and uh, eventually politics as well. Uh, so I come from a family of activism. My mother marched with Martin Luther King as a child. Um, my father's always been very political, so it's sort of in my DNA. I was innately um, born with it, uh, and I inherited sort of a, uh, I guess, a, a fuel to be uh, politically active. So uh, it was actually a blessing in disguise. Uh, you know, with respect to the economy, nobody, nobody likes to get hit. Uh, certainly, I suffered, as many other, others did, but at the same time, I was able to come back here and work to address a lot of the critical issues that are impacting our communities on Cape Cod. So you mentioned that you know, activism runs in your family, so you've always sort of had this um, desire for it. So when, what, is this what made you want to run for Massachusetts State Representative, or, or when did you kind of realize, mm, I think I want to run for, for some sort of office? So uh, what it, initially what I did was I, I joined my local Democratic town committees, uh, and got involved there. Obviously, I had more of a macro sense of how politics politics works. Uh, you know, watching the, the the talking heads on CNN or MSNBC or any, any of the news programming uh, that's out there. Um, and from that, I I felt like, okay, well, this is interesting. Obviously, listening to state and federal politics, but let's get more in touch with what's going on locally because uh, you know the old rule of thumb is is all politics is local. And it's typically, a lot of people don't realize, but it's the select boards, it's the state representative, it's your state senator, it's uh, the town committees and things that make a lot of the bylaws, a lot of the policies and things that directly impact uh, us uh, within our communities. So within the Democratic Town Committee, obviously we had a lot of localized uh, discussion with respect to politics. Um, and then eventually that led to uh, a more expansive effort uh, in my part. I joined the uh, planning board in the town of Dennis, the Affordable Housing Trust, which I now co-chair, uh, the Barnstable Home Consortium. I became the representative for the town of Dennis. Uh, I am the chair of the Dennis Democratic Town Committee. Uh, I sit with uh, another organization called the Community Partnership Committee, uh, and we worked, we're worked. we working to bring a uh, program, a, a facility to the Cape that deals with young people, um, middle school to high school level, that are coping with uh, substance use and, and mental health issues. Uh, and I'm also very, very proud of my work with the crisis intervention team uh, with the Dennis Police Department. Uh, so all of that has been, it's sort of the all encompassing uh, local uh, educational program for me. Uh, and it's just sort of all led to this moment. It's it sort of, I, I guess it molded me for the moment, if you will, to run for state representative, because I feel like there are so many, so many critical needs in our community that aren't being addressed and haven't been addressed. Uh, and with that said, the, the pandemic has really become the ultimate expose into the economic disparities that we're dealing with, uh, food shortages uh, to our families in the community. Uh, you know, protections for, uh, for, for our healthcare workers, for our senior citizens, uh, for our women and children. There, there, there's just, it, it's an endless list of things that need to be addressed, but uh, I feel like that a lot of what I've done um, through my work in the community, uh, my experience in hospitality as a bartender, uh, having those conversations with community members uh, has set me up to make this run 
to make a change and to work with and work for the people of the first principal district in Cape Cod as a whole. Now, what um, initiatives or key points are you trying to emphasize in your campaign that you're particularly passionate about? Sure, sure, sure. So I think the bedrock to this run, and I think it, it, it's applicable to really anything, uh, where's the money come from, right? You can't get anything passed, you can't get anything done if you don't know where the money's coming from and you have to be able to fund things, you have to be able to pay for them to get them accomplished. So I'm, I'm essentially, I'm running to build a year round economy in our tourist based economy. Uh, it's, you know, I wanna build an economy that serves all 250,000 year rounders here in Cape Cod um, in the community and, and, and doesn't just serve part of the community or the, or the summer workforce. Um, we have critical needs here that aren't being met within our community year round. I mean, we look at the substance use issues, uh, alcoholism, uh, depression, uh, unemployment rates, those all, those all surge come the month of October, uh, because people are literally trying to uh, hoard whatever assets, whatever funding they can over the summer just to kind of make it through the winter, and that's not fair. People should be able to live and not just exist. So, um, so in addition to the economy, uh, you know, other things that are, that are areas of interest for me that I look to address right away is funding our healthcare services to protect our nurses and healthcare workers, um, expanding critical me medical services such as uh, maternity care, pediatric care, uh, passing the Roe Act to protect and provide for the women and children of our community, um, repealing the Rent Control Zoning Act and making housing more accessible and more affordable, um, passing a Green New Deal for Massachusetts to create uh, hundreds of new jobs, uh, lowering our carbon footprint by 2030, constructing future-proof green in infrastructure, uh, protecting our precious environment on the Cape. Uh, these are just a handful of, of vital issues and priorities uh, that are on my plate that I will address from day one um, as the next state representative here in the first municipal district. Now, how do you think you'll make our community a better place if you're elected for a Massachusetts state representative? Sure. So uh, I guess just sort of, again, being the all-encompassing of, of what, we, what we discussed before with respect to my history and some of my experience that I have in the community now, um, as I stated, I do serve uh, on various boards and committees uh, I think a lot of, of that work, that experience, and that education, again, has um, prepped me for this moment. Um, and that has all been, you know, uh, volunteerism and activism that I've spent my time in uh, outside of my, my paid work as a bartender. Um, so I have a deep understanding of both our, our local uh, economy as well as our local communities. I'm deeply rooted here as someone who grew up on the Cape. I've seen the transformation uh, of Cape Cod. Uh, and, and certainly I want to be able to afford the opportunities that I had as a child to the children of future generations and the ones who are in place now. And I'm very concerned about uh, youth retention and uh, you know, the decline in enrollment in our public school systems and our collegiate programs and things. So we need to work at retaining those individuals and, and young people and, and inspiring young families to move here and create opportunity and sustainability for them. And I believe I can truly do that uh, through a lot of the work that I've done. And, and that translates well uh, to the state rep position that I'm vying for. Um, and I think that the goals that I've, I've set forth, forth for the betterment of this community amounts to an emphatic win for everyone in this community. Um, so again, I'm, I'm ready on day one uh, to tackle all of these issues. Um, and, and, you know, let's not call them issues. Let's call them priorities. These are priorities of mine. Um, and and uh, like I said, yeah, I'm, I'm ready to go and I'm rearing to go. Well, Josh, thank you so much for taking time out of your campaign to join us today. Well, thank you so much, Emily. I really, really appreciate the time. This, is, uh, this has been illuminating. It's always nice to chat and, and get the message out there. Um, certainly, uh, I'll put in a plug for myself if anyone wants any more information on my campaign. Uh, you can visit our website at www.electjoshmason.com. Uh, we have plenty of phone banking volunteering opportunities as well as information about the campaign. Feel free to reach out. I am hyper responsive to all constituents about any questions you may have. And thank you again so much today. Thank you. Absolutely. For Cape Media News, I'm Emily Tellick.